Well, it's a pleasure to be here. These are all people, well, who look for greater happiness. So do I, so let's continue. I think the first thing to realize is that uh, there's a call for happiness. Well, happiness is a white thing. Uh, I think if we um, focus on uh, evidence-based policy, we should narrow the concept. Uh, I will narrow it to happiness in the sense of life satisfaction. Um, well, there is a lot of findings about that. Uh, measure, measure, measure. Uh, creates an enormous heap of findings uh, which are difficult to overview. Uh, even for specialists, you don't know what's uh, all established scientifically. Uh, therefore, we need a system, a system called Findings Archive. Uh, I will present the Findings Archive on Happiness, the World Database of Happiness, and uh, uh, well, finally, show some of the findings um, uh, that appear from that uh, database and how nations can join this project. But first, why? Well, all people want to be happy, and that is really uh, universal. And there may be a difference in what people think that make you happy, but happiness in the sense of enjoying your life, um, that's universal. And that's what we want for ourselves, but also that's what we want for our children. And there may be a difference in, well, poor nations where the focus is on alleviating misery, um, but in modern nations, well, we want uh, happiness, uh, enjoy life more, and the more so because we know it's possible. Uh, in past time, uh, there was the idea that, well, misery is part of human life, but one of the things that uh, happiness research has learned is that most people can be happy. Well, and if you're not, you want to be happy, and people call on governments to create conditions for greater happiness, and actually that's why we are here. As I said, happiness is a word, and a word with different meanings, and here in this conference I have heard many of them, and maybe it's good uh, that we have a look at the various meanings. When uh, thinking about, talking about happiness, um, actually we address different qualities of life. If you look there at the left, hey, uh, you can think of chances for a good life and outcomes of life. And there are qualities in your environment and there are qualities in yourself. Well, that gives four qualities of life which have all been called happiness. The chances for a good life embodied in the environment, that is what I call the livability. And that's actually the first thing governments focus at. But another chance is not in your environment, that is your life ability. And that's what we, um, well, support in education and in therapy. And, but when we look at the outcomes of life, well, there is the usefulness of your life and what you contribute to the environment, um, but also the satisfaction with your life. Now, typically, governments focus on chances for a good life, and wealth, education, but yeah, how much wealth do we need? And how much education, and what education? In order to assess what chances are required, you must look at the outcomes. And a particular well-measurable outcome is life satisfaction. And that's why I focus on life satisfaction. And life satisfaction, well, that's something we have in mind. And things we have in mind, you can just ask. And here is a simple question about life satisfaction 
taking all together, how satisfied or dissatisfied are you with your life as a whole these days? Well, that's the definition of happiness. Quite simple. You can ask people, they give an answer. Most people can answer instantly. Eh, well, one or two percent says don't know, and of these, most are philosophers. <laughs> now, hey, using such questions has created a lot of research. And here you have a graph. And you see the number of scientific publications on happiness in the sense of life satisfaction, and you see it's soaring. And it seems if, as if it's dropping down, but we're just behind counting. Uh, actually, the number is now about here, which means that in this year, some 700 uh, scientific empirical publications on happiness in the sense of life satisfaction will appear. 700 is quite a lot. You can't read it all. And that's uh, why we get lost. You get lost anyway if you Google on happiness, because then you get hit, uh, one million hits. And even if you Google on happiness in Google Scholar, well, you get just too many, and too many meanings. And so the first thing is to, well, uh, focus uh, uh, on uh, happiness in that particular uh, meaning, and then present the results also in the same scientific language. And once you have done that, then you can classify them so that you can find your way in this pile of research findings. Well, the solution is a findings archive eh, selected on concept, not on word, eh, which means that you have to read all that stuff eh, to identify what they are typically talking about. Um, then describe that in standard, well, pages, and page with uh, who, who done it, um, which people have been uh, interviewed, um, what is the result, and then you can code these pages by subject, by population, and by method. Well, we are doing that uh, quite a while, and uh, here you see the, well, the new website of the World Database of Happiness. Um, and you see also how that works. And so we start reading everything called happiness, well-being. Uh, that's many stuff. We select on concept. And then after having selected on concept, we select on measure, and because some people say, well, I focus on life satisfaction, but actually they measure something else. And then from the selected studies of which we know, okay, these measures fit our concept, then we take out the findings and their distributional findings, how happy people are in particular times and places, and you see we have almost 30,000 of these. And there's also this, uh, correlational findings, things that go together with more or less happiness. And for instance, education, uh, sex, um, things like that. And here you can see uh, what things contribute to happiness in what countries, among what kind of people. Eh? That is the detailed information you need eh, for making sensible policies. Well, you're the first to see this new site. Um, and on this site, you can navigate um, distributional findings, findings in nations, 
findings in a particular nation, and here you end up on the old site. Um, and here I have an example of a country, and that is the happiest country in the world, uh, that is Denmark. I think it's good for governments to see this example, because the nice thing is that the happiest country over time is becoming happier. So what's possible in Denmark should be possible uh, everywhere in the world. And here you see how Denmark is doing on average happiness. And well, there's still one, one country ever, Costa Rica, has obtained a higher score. But we are not only interested in average happiness, we are also interested in how long and happy people live, combination of happiness and life expectancy, and about uh, inequality in happiness. And as a policymaker, you want both that the average is high and the inequality is limited, and you can also compute inequality adjusted happiness. Well, um, on this side, in the case of Denmark, there is a list of all the surveys ever held, sorted by type of question and year. And there is also an overview of the correlational findings. And for instance, here you see findings, correlations by age. I think it's about six, well, six studies in Denmark focusing on the relation between happiness and age. And here you see the number of findings in all countries of the world. And so easily you can see how happiness works out for a target group in your country, and you can easily jump to findings in other nations. And to give you an example of what the finding page is, um, here we have um, a page on the happiness of migrants. And, uh, well, here is the report and uh, the people studied. Um, here is, well, how they distinguish between Turkish and Danish. And it is migrants in Denmark. And here you see, well, that Turkish people are a bit less happy than Danish nationals, and you can also see that the difference is bigger among females than among males. Yeah, this is just one piece of information, yeah, one of these 25,000 pages we have. Well, in this way you can also um, see how um, characteristics of society, how these work out for the happiness of citizens. And for instance, in this database are uh, 42 publications on the relationship between average happiness in the country and quality of the government. Yeah. Actually, one of the things we found is that the best way to greater happiness is to have good bureaucrats. You can sort on income, um, then you get tables, and in the tables you always find a finding page. Well, that's a pretty big heap of uh, uh, findings. Um, some of the uh, things that stand out. Well, one thing is that average happiness is going up. Not everywhere, eh? not in Syria, but in most countries, people are gradually getting happier. And surprisingly, in spite of widening differences in income, the difference in happiness is getting smaller. That's one thing. Another thing, if you read all these data, is that most conditions for happiness are universal. 
Eh? We all need good government, even in countries where corruption is actually accepted. And we all need a good social relationships, marriage in, in particular. Well, and I said already, the quality of government is a main condition. And here it is not so much the democratic, um, the quality of government, uh, which is uh, of importance as well, but mainly the technical quality of the government machine. Yeah? Are the civil servants uh, well educated? Uh, do they know what, what they are doing? Um, is there little corruption and how much light is there between the rules and the practice? He, the more predictable government is for the citizens, the more they can choose their own way of life and that's what raises the happiness. And, well, it's already mentioned, uh, happy people are better citizens and they are uh, more involved in the democratic process and important, they pay their taxes better. And if you want to have a good government, well, someone should pay them. Well, this is an international project and we cover all the knowledge in uh, the world. Um, research is growing, so in the beginning we could easily harvest all the findings ever produced, that becomes ever more difficult, and ever more nations get interest. So I invite you to join, uh, appoint an associate uh, to this uh, project uh, who collects uh, and ev eventually analyze uh, the available uh, data in your country. We help them present that in a standard format. Uh, and once these data are entered, uh, like in the case of Denmark, you can see how you're doing, and not only how you're doing on average, uh, in, with respect to average level of happiness and inequality, uh, but also how you're doing for specific uh, uh, publics. And I guess, well, in most countries, uh, there's not too much uh, happiness research. So in most cases, it's a one day a week job. But in some countries, uh, like Denmark, uh, you need more. Well, uh, that's it. Um, thank you for your attention.